All right, what's up, y'all? So by popular demand, we have the weighted dip iteration of my tier list series. We're going to be going through the best and worst weighted dip slash dip accessories that you guys can do to either increase your one rep max weighted dip, your five rep max weighted dip, or your body weight dip for reps if you're someone that's just looking to get more body weight dips and you can only do a few right now. Just for context to you know speak to a little bit of my qualification on the subject, not only do I have a massive bench press, you can check my training playlist to see a few of my, uh, my PRs and my body weight. I also have a pretty respectable weighted dip and I don't really specialize for it. I've done a five plate full range of motion dip that's hands to shoulders, bottoming out the range of motion fairly easily and with very little preparation for it. So I know a thing or two about building the upper body. Now we're gonna go through a few criteria with the uh, tier list selection here. But first I wanna direct you guys to a few videos in my playlist that are gonna allow you to add context to these exercises. Go to my bodybuilding final answer playlist. Click on the video relating the chest and building a massive back. That's gonna allow you to use the best of these exercises, specific ways to target different muscle groups. So you hypertrophy enjoyers are gonna be able to use this tier list as well. So first and foremost, we gotta talk about the tiering. So S is most or best utility. That's either it is really good at one thing or it is really good at multiple things. D is the opposite of that, obviously. So getting right into it, starting a little tongue in cheek, we have the most useless exercise known to man, the upright row. I've made several videos on the topic so far. It's not a dangerous exercise. It's not uniquely dangerous. It's pretty good. It's not the best for everybody, but for those that it works well for, it works well for me, it works well for many others. It builds your shoulders, it builds your yoke, so that's your upper back, your rear delts. And it's fairly low fatigue as well. So we talked about the stimulus to fatigue in the last tier list video about pull-ups. What that means for those that are new is that with each movement you get a stimulus and then associating amount of fatigue, soreness, just feeling like you got hit by a truck that comes after you do the exercise and in the middle of your workout. This has a high stimulus and low fatigue. It's just giga brain stuff that you guys need to understand with your training. I can't put it any higher than B though because it doesn't work your chest and the novelty of working your shoulders and your upper back isn't something that's not fulfilled by like A and S tier movements as well, but it's pretty good. Now, one that's also Honestly, way better. You know, we're gonna put this in S tiers. The chest supported. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm I'm, I'm seal row master race. This is the chest to bar lat pull down. That's gonna be another S tier movement, the chest supported row. But the chest to bar lat pull down is really good because it works everything in your back, from your lats, your rhomboids, your rear delts. What it also trains, as well as the upright row, actually, is scapular movement. But it's a lot more intuitive on a lat pull down. So you can. Lean back, get a little gangster lean going on, and really fully retract into your scaps, and then fully retract at the top. That's really important for just general health when you do a lot of pressing because you want to keep your shoulders and your rotator cuff healthy. In addition to that, just building a big bench or a big weighted dip is highly correlated with not only the size of your like pressing muscles, so your chest, triceps, shoulders, but also your posterior muscles, like the antagonist muscle groups. You gotta have a big back to have a big bench. You've never seen someone with a big, nice range of motion bench that didn't also have a big back. The reason for that being is that big upper back creates stability through the bottom most range of motion. It allows you to generate power off the chest in any case. So that's for overhead press, bench press, dips. The easiest alternative to that which trains in a, you know, a similar movement pattern and a similar range of motion is a pull-up of your choice. So that could be chin-ups, ring pull-ups, whatever the case may be. I do rate the lat pull-downs a little bit higher. Not very much. They're pretty much interchangeable, to be honest with you. But there's a gradient of loading between these. So that's just the Giga Brain way of saying if you're someone that cannot really do body weight pull-ups, this is for you guys that are watching this to get more body weight dips. More than likely, you're not gonna be able to you know, gather the benefits from a pull-up because you can't do very many of them. But you can load up like 60 or 70 pounds on that pull-down and get the full benefits, you know what I'm saying? In addition to that, the scapular movement is really good on these, the pull-ups, but it's not as intuitive as the lat pull-downs just because 
You can get a gangster lean on uh, pull-ups as well. I got that from Chris, Dr Chris Jones, Physiques of Greatness. Let me know if y'all used to watch him in the comments down below. But you have to engage your core a little bit to do that on pull-ups. And that's not a huge deal, but it's way simpler to do on lat pull-downs. Now, we are going to go into like meme tier exercises, skipping pull-up, absolutely useless. Doesn't work your back really at all compare it to a pull-up in the context of building a dip. It's more of a conditioning exercise and not a good one at that. Now here's one that's pretty good for weighted pull-up training, but not the best for weighted dip training in my opinion. So supported or assisted pull-ups are really good for weighted pull-ups because they allow you to basically get more extra bicep work. And then for guys that aren't you know, good at pull-ups, they allow you to get more reps in a pull-up range of motion. That novelty is very limited with training weighted dips just because you're doing exercises to get a stronger upper back and lats. This, the assisted weighted pull-up is only useful to a point and that's for guys that are on the more beginner spectrum of strength. If you're weighted, doing weighted dips with three plates, it's very unlikely that you're not gonna be able to do at least a set of 10 on pull-ups and then put some weight on them as well. So the assisted pull-up is limited in my opinion in this particular context. Another meme tear exercise is gonna be cheat rows. It's like a, an explosive partial range of motion deadlift where you're basically just jamming your torso into the bar to kind of simulate a row. It's more of a deadlift exercise and it's a pretty good deadlift exercise in my opinion. It's basically just like an explosive deadlift and they're fun, you know what I'm saying? But for weighted dip training, they're not really working your back the way you want to be looking for. So they're a D tier, they're a meme exercise. Another good exercise, let's go into pressing exercises. We talked a lot about back stuff and shoulders and tertiary exercises. Ring turned out push-ups are A tier. The reason why I don't put them in S tier is because there's a bunch of pressing exercises that I feel do a better job or are more versatile at building the prime movers in a dip. But these are really good. Like there are gymnasts that don't use weights at all and just train on freaking rings their entire careers and their upper bodies are absolutely stacked. Um, they're more of like an advanced progression of like a regular ring push-up. So something that you guys could do, and this is more of a programming goal and tidbit, is you could have one day where you're doing regular ring work and then another day where you're doing ring turned out. It's like two different variations. Man, who's this guy right here? He's looking pretty jacked. Every chest supported row is going to be S tier, just like we kind of alluded to at the beginning. So this is a a dumbbell seal row. It's it gonna allow you to work everything in your back without stressing your lower back at all. And, and it gives you a nice extended range of motion since you can pull past the bench. Um, let's go ahead and try to get the other chest supported rows on the board as well. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the hierarchy of the chest supported rows. So the regular like classic seal row is the least efficacious of all of them to, co to quote Derek for more plates more dates that's like his favorite fucking word efficacious simply because um, the range of motion is limited by the bench but everything to include like the chest supported t-bar row that I just put up the dumbbell seal row the trap bar seal row and then the camber bar seal row it's really just going to depend on what you have access to. They're all on an equal playing field. So if you have access to one, use it. It's not a big deal which one you pick. Pick your favorite. Now let's go for another decent exercise. And this is going to be for uh, home gym master race. The reason why I'm going to put chair dips in C tier is just because it fills the role of tricep work for a home gym guy, but even for that particular individual, I think there's an exercise that's gonna work better for you guys, and it's gonna be the body weight tricep extension. The reason why I don't like these is because it's putting a lot of stress on your pec minor and your shoulders just to work your triceps. It's not the end of the world since it's just body weight, but 
it's extra fatigue in those pressing muscles for not any benefit other than working your triceps. Not useless, but you have to work around it a little bit more than you think you would for something that's basically just a body weight exercise. Better than nothing, but flawed in my opinion. Let me know how y'all feel about that. So here is the much better alternative um, for the home gym enjoyers. I'm not gonna put it in S tier with like the machine tricep work just because machines are just a better, um, they feel better, better resistance profile, meaning they just feel more consistent throughout the range of motion and they're easier to load. But the body weight tricep extension, you can load it with a weighted vest or like a backpack or something. And you can go through a pretty decent range of motion without stressing anything but honestly your elbows. And that just comes with the, the territory with most tricep work. Really cool variation you can do. Look this up. Uh, old West Side barbell video I watched. Rest in peace, Louis Simmons. Um, someone was doing like a rolling tricep extension with like a football bar and their body weight. Kind of like the guy in this picture, but they just held a football bar. It looked really smooth on the elbows compared to that. So that variation, if I had a picture of it, would be an S tier. Man, bench press variations. You'd assume that they're very non-specific and useless for dip training. And most people, just like when you tell them, you know, bench variations are some of the best movements that you can use for dips. It's like you're speaking Chinese to them. When, when you say the opposite, dips are good to use on a bench program. Oh, it makes total sense. Well, the same rings true but in my opinion, even more for weighted dips, just because there's a few reasons why. I feel that bench variations that, you know, take away leg drive, so like the feet up bench here, um, they target the chest a lot better than with dips. Not to say they don't work on dips, obviously they do, but they're working the pecs a lot more. Another reason why they're good is that stimulus to fatigue ratio we talked about. You're gonna use way more than your max bench, even on like a sub-maximal set of weighted dips, because you have to factor in your body weight that you're pushing as well. You're nowhere near using the same loads on a bench press that you would use on a dip, so the, the fatigue on your elbows, your shoulders, and everything like that is gonna be far lower as well. Now, we went and looked at the feet up bench. I think so the floor press is an interesting exercise. It's either decent because it's a truncated range of motion, meaning shortened, or it's really good and essentially just a, a feet up bench. I'm gonna just put it in S tier because you can modify the, the floor press and you know no matter what your leverages are. Basically, if your arms are really long, you're not gonna be able to touch your chest. You can just add something like an ab mat. Uh, you can get those at Elite FTS or, or Rogue Fitness or whatever just to add some extra range of motion to the bottom most portion of the exercise. And that's gonna allow you to basically just simulate a feet up bench. The reason why I like this a little bit mm, as much is that you can break up the concentric eccentric chain. That's just gonna give you a unique hypertrophy stimulus in of itself. It's basically allowing you to press from a more stable surface since it's the floor obviously, so it's gonna feel really good on the shoulders. On top of that, since you're not arching at all, this is more giga brain stuff, like a golden tidbit rather. When you're not arched, your, your, uh, your pecs aren't as uh, lengthened at the bottom, so you can get a better peak contraction. When you arch on a regular bench press and you block out, your pecs are still a little lengthened at the top because you're arched, but when you're flat back, that doesn't happen. So it's a little bit better for hypertrophy. Not a huge deal, so the two are interchangeable in my opinion. So we talked a lot about push-ups, a lot about bench press. Let's talk about some dips. So dips with accommodating resistance, so like bands, chains, whatever the case may be, those are really good just because they allow you to work your triceps more um, at the top. You know, it's just an overload for the triceps. It allows you to go through that dip range of motion. Really good exercise overall to use as a variation. Now assisted dips are gonna be invaluable for you guys and gals and circles, as Doucette likes to say, they can't do very many body weight dips, one. And two, for you guys that can do a lot of body weight dips, this is gonna allow you to milk the lockout, similarly to like the utility of a weighted pull-up and a weighted, you know, the weighted pull-up tier list. 
with the weighted pull-ups that allows you to just get more bicep work at the top since it's lighter at the bottom and the same as a body weight pull-up at the top. Same thing with the dips, right? So it's easier at the bottom, the same amount as a regular body weight dip in terms of triceps at the top. So it's gonna be a pretty good finisher for the stronger guys and for the guys that are trying to get more body weight dips. It's gonna be a way of accumulating volume that you otherwise wouldn't be able to in the, the dip movement pattern. So this is the absolute best one-to-one -one carryover exercise that you can do for weighted dips since most of y'all, to be honest, are more than likely doing parallel or above weighted dips. It's gonna be a full range of motion. I call it the ATG weighted dip. That's what I hit my five plates on. I think it was actually 230 and uh, 230 pounds in, in place. I'd have to go back and um, watch the video. But the reason why this has the most carryover one is it does a few things. And you obviously wanna work yourself up to this end range of motion. So don't just like jam a, a good percentage of your one rep max weighted dip on this full range of motion weighted dip. And then be surprised when you hurt yourself. With everything, you wanna work sensibly, work within your limits. I'm not a doctor, but there's certain things that you wanna to do to make sure that you do things safely. So just listen to your body, work up to this over time. But the end range of motion does a few things. It acclimates your pecs, your shoulders, and your triceps to a bigger range of motion, which is just gonna over prepare those tissues in case of anything like, you know, there's just mo moments during like a maximally, you know, exerted set that your form deviates a little bit and you're put into positions you've never been put into before. You're putting yourself in literally the deepest range of motion that you can go into with an ATG weighted dip. You're over preparing yourself for that moment where the form gets kind of screwy. Two, more range of motion means more hypertrophy more often than not. So you're going through t two, three times the range of motion. It's not gonna be two, three times the, the hypertrophy, but it's gonna be significantly more stimulating. In other words, if you take your, um, your parallel or above parallel weighted dip and you get your ATG weighted dip to or surpassing that number, your parallel weighted dip is gonna see a pretty big increase, especially if you're doing them synergistically. So you're doing the ATG weighted dip one day, you know, and then the regular weighted dip the other. Ring dips are fire. I'm not gonna put them in S tier just because ring turned out weighted Weighted uh, ring dips are better in my opinion. I don't know if I have a picture of them. I'm gonna check real quick. But ring turned out dips are essentially just a harder version of a, a, a ring dip. So the same thing with the, the ring push-ups. You could have a regular ring push-up and then a ring turned out push-up. Same thing applies with the dips. So some form of band work as movement prep is invaluable in almost every context relating to training and upper body lift. So you wanna warm up those elbows to do whatever you're about to do, whether that's pulling or pressing. In this case, it's pressing. So you're gonna do tricep band pushdowns. This gives the really unique benefit of not only being able to prepare your tissues for what you're about to do, it allows people like myself that have longer arms when they do presses to prepare themselves to do a little bit of extra tricep work that wouldn't be possible otherwise. So something that I did personally, another golden tidbit for you guys. I started with just the band press downs, right? Did those twice a week and on my off days as I felt like it. Then I introduced tricep rope push downs. In addition to the band work, still I did the band work. After so many weeks and months, I did tricep overhead extensions. I haven't done one of those since I was a teenager just because they classically have always beat my elbows up when I did them in addition to like all my bench variations. My elbows felt great after doing those. So I have one day of tricep extensions, one day of tricep rope pushdowns, and I'm doing the band press downs as often as I can and my elbows feel great for it. Man, great, great exercise. Another good exercise, the Powell Raise. I gave these high marks on my um, weighted pull-up tier list. They get similarly high marks here. Big range of motion rear delt exercise, way better than a rear delt fly. If I have a picture of a rear delt fly on here, that, that shit is going in D tier because it is a useless exercise. 
I know John Meadows really used to like forced reps on rear delt flies, and that's probably the like only way you can use them and they'll do anything. The problem with the rear delt fly, and there's probably someone that's typing in the comments now that had already disliked the video, well, I do rear delt flies all the time and blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. With a rear delt fly, your active range of motion in terms of what's actually stimulating your rear delt is the last eighth of the range of motion. You tell me, what is more hypertrophic? An eighth squat, not even a quarter squat, or an ATG squat? If you tell me that the eighth squat is more hypertrophy, gives you more hypertrophy, unsubscribe from my channel, dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. This is not reality. So the pal raise is the ATG squat in this situation. The rear delt is the rear delt fly is the uh, quarter squat. Now, if you for whatever reason don't have dumbbells and you for some reason have a cable machine, you could also do like a pal raise type of motion um, on a machine and get that same full range of motion. Tricep extensions or French press or whatever you want to call it. Really good exercise. More stimulating than a tricep rope push down in almost every occasion, since you can use a little bit more weight. Um, but harder on the elbow, so it's something that you're gonna wanna prepare yourself for, like we just talked about with my little uh, anecdote there. Dumbbell pullovers. I really like them in weighted pull-up programs. I don't like them quite as much in the context of a pressing program, but they still work your lats really well. So I'm not saying not to use them. So if you're doing like, for example, I work my back four times a week. One of those days I'm doing a pullover. You know, I'm still working my lats and everything. It's just not working my upper back quite as much. It's not, it doesn't have as much utility as the other pulls, I guess is what I'm saying. But it doesn't have no utility. It's still a good exercise. Anything C and above is good. It has its use. Man, those ring turned out dips. I did have a, uh, a picture of them. I had this Chad with the, the sunglasses. We already talked about them, but there we go. Here's another clown lift. Like this is never, weighted pull-ups, not excuse me, one arm pull-ups are never a good exercise as a developmental tool in any context. They're undue stress on the shoulder, the elbow, the bicep, uh, the long head of your tricep sometimes even for nothing other than just demonstrating the fact that you can do a one-arm pull-up. And then invariably, there's gonna be someone, oh, well, you're just saying that because you can't do them. Dude, I, I post one-arm pull-up videos whenever I feel like getting views on social media. I, I can do them. I've done them at over 200 pounds. You know what I mean? There's still a clown lift, so. Do them when you feel like getting views on um, <laughs> Instagram or YouTube, but don't do them if you wanna get better at weighted dips because they're useless. Here's the virgin rear delt fly. We're going to put that in D tier because we already talked about it. We're just getting, you know, terrible exercise after terrible exercise. The one arm push up isn't as bad as these other ones. So it's, I can't put it in C tier just because I can't put it on the level of these, but it's definitely better than the, this, this clown show here. So these four clown exercises, terrible. But the one arm weighted, one arm push up is, it's not completely terrible. You're still working your pecs, your shoulders, your triceps. It's just not good at anything that it does. I can't explain, but you don't get a good mind muscle connection. There's some stress on your pec minor that you don't really want to accrue from doing the movement with that, without any benefit. It's okay compared to these, but in the context, everything else is terrible. Oh man, I gotta put my biases aside because I don't like inverted rows at all for me personally. I love them for most people. I personally don't get a good mind-muscle connection from them, but I have to put them in par with the chest-supported rows because they do the same thing. Um, they're a good home gym master race alternative for guys that you know might not have the setup to safely do sail rows at home or at the commercial gym, maybe even. Um, you can load them up really easy with a backpack, a Kensui weighted vest. They're pretty good. Man, overhead press. So I'm going to rank the two overhead presses right now. So I'm going to put the standing overhead press in C tier 
and and this is where you could just fill in like Z press, seated non back supported overhead press, behind the neck press, any strict overhead press, so it's Smith overhead press, whatever the case may be. I don't like standing overhead presses just because you can have a tendency to lean back. And all that does is just shittily work your upper chest and take away from the stimulus of your shoulders and your triceps while also giving you lower back fatigue because you're, you're laying back. Seated non-back supported Z presses, whatever, are better because they work your shoulders as intended through a good bar path without stressing your lower back. So they're better in every context for hypertrophy. Now for demonstrating your best ability to press something over your head, Standing is always going to be your main exercise, but this ain't the overhead press tier list, guys. So spare me your com your comments. We'll leave them anyway. I, I want to know what you think, but we're going to make the overhead press tier list probably not next, but eventually. And, you know, this will be ranked a little differently in that context. Let me know if y'all want to see that. Deficit handstand weighted push-ups are chatty. Like the chad factor is S. The weighted dip factor, in my opinion, is just B tier. It's just a, you know, like a home gym alternative of, of this. You know what I mean? So use these all, you know, alternatively, like interchangeably. I low key may put, you know, the handstand weighted push ups, you know, or with body weight a little bit higher. Just because if you're Sammy Sausage Head, you could set up with the seated overhead press and possibly hurt your lower back i've heard it before guys i'm strength and conditioning coach i've heard a lot of shit you can hurt yourself on some exercises that you would be surprised people hurt themselves on um but that's not you could hurt get hurt yourself with a handstand push-up in different ways but it ain't gonna be your lower back it's really easy to just reach failure on a handstand way to push up and then you know fall backwards on your feet Cable rows. Cable rows are interesting. I'm going to put them in A tier just because I do feel that they are a step below these other back exercises. Just simply because, you know, it does still work your lower back. You do still have to, to use your legs a little bit. Body English can come into play and probably will come into play even if you're really strict with your form. But, it, you know, it still works everything in your back really well. If you have access to it, don't feel bad about using it, but I would prefer that you do pull downs and chest supported rows. Now, we're gonna talk about another, you know, like another movement prep exercise. This is gonna be like a hammer curl or your bicep curl of choice. Now, far be it from me to say that like, I'm gonna put it in B tier just because it, it has its place but it's not like an invaluable piece. Because what I'm meaning to say is, if you take two people, one person does curls of some sort and the other doesn't, there's not gonna be a huge difference between their bench presses. But what you find is sometimes you get a lot of like tendinopathy in your, in your bicep and leading up into your shoulder and your pec minor that curls tend to help alleviate. In addition to that, it's also getting blood uh, rushed through your elbows as well so it's kind of filling that slot here that the band press downs do as well it has its place so i'm i might even put it in c tier i'm gonna put it in c tier it has its utility but it's not you know if you didn't do them you're not gonna not have a big way to dip for that man the most my most memed on exercise it's an exercise that i talk trash on a lot just because a lot of people with small backs try to say that the iliac pull down is like the best way to work your lats and it mugs pull ups and lat pull downs and blah blah blah. Look guys, yeah, it does work the iliac division of your lats very well. The reality of it is, is that you cannot load it as well or as heavy through as, as big of a range of motion as a regular lat pull down, a weighted pull up or a chest supported row or even a barbell row. It's more like an accessory exercise in that instance but it still works your upper back and everything pretty well I, i'm not going to put it above even like the cable row though because it's it's limited in its loading and plus it's an exercise for nerds <laughs> um if you enjoy the iliac pull down take full offense 
This is probably, this exercise here, the football bar bench, is probably the best chest pressing exercise that you can just generally do for carryover to any other pressing movements. That's dips, bench press, overhead press. Especially if you're using a close grip on any of those. Um, reason being is that it does a few things. So it allows you to simulate what dumbbells do, which is take more of a neutral-ish grip. One, in the fact that it's a neutral grip, and two, you can flare out at the bottom a lot like with dumbbells and get that extra stretch on the pecs at the bottom. Because it's a neutral grip as well, it's going to be more comfortable for a lot of you guys that, you know, just can't tolerate a, a lot of straight bar work, to be honest with you. That's many people, especially since most of y'all don't bench press with proper form. Um, check out my final answer on uh, leg drive and bench press safety. Active retraction and movement of the scapula, not to full protraction, but just to allow it to move a little bit so you're not jamming your pec minor against joints and injuring it is pivotal on any chest press. Don't argue with me, that's just the meta in strength and conditioning right now. Every reputable strength and conditioning coach that isn't a boomer booger powerlifting coach from the 70s is gonna tell you that you need to allow your scaps to move to some degree on pressing movements. Now play with that, don't load up your working weights and then over protract and hurt yourself. Play, play around with it in terms of that golden tidbit. But the football bar bench allows you guys that have those hurt shoulders to be able to press with a little bit more comfort. In addition to that, it's a good stimulus to fatigue. I bench way less with the football bar than I do with the straight bar. It's about a 30 pound difference these days. Um, when I first started off with it, I got completely mogged with it and it was like a 100 pound difference. Uh, I failed 315 with the bar, with this bar the first time I tried it. I've never, I haven't failed a 315 bench press since I first did it when I was like 18. So, can't say enough about the football bar. If you have access to it, use it. So something I think we're gonna do once we get all these guys on the board is we're gonna actually rank the S tiers in order. So I don't know if I've uh, either you know validated some of you guys by putting your favorites high or just angered some of you by putting some of your favorites low, but one that I put in D tier for pull-ups was the barbell row. I'm gonna put it in, if I put cable rows in A tier, I have to put the barbell rows in A tier as well, just because they essentially are comparable exercises in my opinion. You are still working your hips and your lower back on cable rows. Tell me, tell me you don't and then try some of these heavy and then tell me how your lower back and your hips feel. Barbell rows do the same thing. Specifically, I'm talking about the strict Dr. Mike Israetel barbell row with a nice eccentric. You're not jerking the weight up. You're using your muscles to lift the weight. You're using your back, your rear delts, and your arms. You're not using your hips, your lower back, and your calves, and standing up on your tippy toes and doing whatever the hell you can to move the weight. You're using your back, and it just happens to be that your lower back is stabilizing you at the bottom. That type of row in this context is A tier because it's doing everything we need to and it's working your lower back a little bit. Guys, here's the thing about weighted dip enjoyers. I'm not talking shit, guys, but typically people that train weighted dips and weighted pull-ups don't really train their legs very much. So a little bit of lower back stimulus is not hurting you since you're not doing heavy lower body lifts. You know what I'm saying? You don't have any lower body lifts for a little bit of lower back stimulus to take anything away from it. So A tier, just not as... You can't push them as heavy or as hard as these chest supported variations. That's the only reason I don't put it in S. Ab wheel or, you know, your preferred ab exercise of choice, S tier. Man, I'll tell you what, I did weighted dips for the first time a couple weeks ago uh, in, the, in a long time. And my obliques were like, dude, what are you doing to me? And I work my obliques regularly. There's a lot of core stabilization that goes into play with dips at the bottom most range of motion. Having a strong stable core is never not a bad thing for any upper body or lower body lift. Work your abs. S tier in every context. Man, the tricep rope push down. I rank that above the tricep extension in terms of overall utility just because everybody can do tricep rope push downs without pain. Not everyone can do tricep extensions without pain at first, um, but the stimulus is a little bit less than the tricep 
uh, extension. You guys let me know down below, which do you like better as your preferred tricep exercise of choice? The tricep rope push down or the tricep extension or, or French press for you guys that like to call it that. Let me know how you feel about that. Man, JM Blakely, such a Chad, man. I remember that uh, old VHS JM Press tutorial that he made back in the day. Um, old school video, it's where I learned the JM Press. Everyone does it a little different. Basically, the idea behind it is that it's halfway between a bench press, halfway between a tricep extension. You've heard people say that a million times, or potentially more than likely you have. Um, it's going to look different depending upon who's doing it, how you're built. My arms are long as hell. It's going to look different from you short-armed benchers. Um, but it's kind of, you know, it's not something that I do often. But it, it, it is giving you a slightly higher stimulus than the tricep extension even for your triceps. It does have an associated level of fatigue that's higher as well just because you're using more weight. So you could argue that the tricep extension is just better in general because of that. But I put those three, the tricep rope push down, the extension and jam press more or less on the same tier. Man, I, I put two pictures that curl uh, we talked about curls already. It's in C tier. Band face pulls. J Mr. Cavalier, Jeff Cavalier's favorite exercise to prescribe for everything. Your wife left you, cheated on you, band face pulls. Small mushroom tip, band face pulls. <laughs> for you Hodge Twins enjoyers, you, uh, you, you guys appreciated that. Trying to get sugar walls, do some band face pulls before you go over our house. Anyway, band face pulls, they work your rear delts, they are your work your rotator cuffs. Invaluable exercise, um, a bit overstated um, in the strength and conditioning world because it, some of the meta has gone down the rabbit hole of just making all of your training preventative shit instead of mostly doing shit to get you big and jacked and strong or more athletic and just having everything bulletproofing work. Band face pull is kind of one of them exercises that those pencil necks prescribe a lot. A um, little bit overstated, but you know, all the same, invaluable. Straight arm pull downs, I'm gonna put on the same tier that I put the pullovers. So that's, you know, in C tier, basically the same exercise, same utility. I think the pullover looks chattier in my opinion, but they both do the same shit. So we're down to the last few exercises, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and just get, you know, the runt of the litter out of the way. It's the dumbbell overhead press. Interchangeable with the handstand push-up and the seated overhead press, similar benefits. You're getting the neutral grip here and it allows your shoulder to move more freely. Um, it could low-key be ranked above these within the B tier for that reason alone, but I don't know, interchangeable in my opinion. So we have three S tier exercises left before we just go ahead and rank the S tiers and then you know close the video out. Dumbbell bench pressing of your choice is absolutely a great exercise because it allows you to use even less load than a bench press variation, even more range of motion, and even more freedom than the football bar bench. So it could be argued that it is even like better than the football bar bench for dips. I'm still gonna put the football bar bench at a higher level just because you can load it heavier and it's gonna, you know, that's gonna be more of a strength training piece. And this, the dumbbell bench of your choice that's incline, decline, or flat, it's more of the hypertrophy piece. What it does in addition to all that is it allows you to work uh, in bro science terms to make it make sense for people that don't care about the specific training nuts and bolts, is it works your stabilizers a little bit more. That's not the most technically correct way of referring to it. I can refer to it in like the more, you know, biomechanically correct fashion, but to make it make sense for the most people, it challenges your stabilizers through an extended range of motion. And that's just infinitely beneficial because when you add that stability from a barbell back, you're gonna be stronger for it. There's a reason why if you take your bench press and you cut it in half and then think you're gonna dumbbell press it, you're not gonna be able to. Weighted push-ups, S tier. Um, weighted push-ups low key, you can comprise a lot more of your training than weighted dip variations and get better results. 
just because with dips, you're really just trying to train the scale, in my opinion, and the strength. So like you're doing some volume of skill work, so that could be like the ATG weighted dips, and then some volume of strength work, so it could be like regular weight, weighted dips. Hypertrophy work and like your main accessory for you home gym enjoyers could be the weighted push-up. You can even do that from a deficit, incline, whatever. Very versatile exercise. And then we have the, uh, the chatty close grip bench replacement for home gym master race enjoyers is going to be the diamond push-up. It's better than a close grip bench if you can load it with weight because you're getting a better like shortened contraction. What that means, galaxy brain way of saying you get a better squeeze at the top because your arms converge a little bit more since they're closer, your hands are closer. That's the tier list, y'all. So, you know, I, I, I bet I haven't pissed most of y'all off because, you know, there's only five D tiers. You know, and those we can pretty universally agree other than this one, probably you're all going to have problems with the rear delt fly. But most of these, all of these C tier and above have utility. S tier is most utility. A is a little less, B is a little less, C is more limited. We're going to go through real quick and rank the S tiers in terms of weighted dip utility. So ATG weighted dips. Best one-to-one -one carryover, those have to be number one. Number two would be, in my opinion, the lap pull-down. Number three would be football bar bench. Four would be dumbbell bench press. Hmm, this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to rank weighted pull-ups or pull-ups of choice after that. Then weighted push-ups after pull-ups. Then diamond push-ups after weighted push-ups. Then we're going to do... See, here's the thing. So with just this alone, you're pretty covered. I don't feel that bench press variations are as necessary as a chest supported row variation after you've already done weighted push ups as an option, football bar bench and dumbbell bench. So after the push ups, I'm going to rank the extended range of motion chest supported rows. Um, that's going to include the inverted row that I personally don't like very much, but works well for most people. After that, I'm going to rank the tricep work after the chest supported rows. Assisted weight, is this assisted dips? I'm going to put at number one along with the ATG weighted dips, um, specifically for you guys that can't do very many. For stronger guys, I'd put it at the bottom of S tier. So that's kind of how we would rank that there. So we got the tricep work after the chest supported rows. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting any. After that would be the Powell raises and the rear delt work. So that's the face pulls and the, uh, you know, the rear delt flies. No, not rear delt flies, power raises. Rear delt flies are trash. Um, and then ab work of choice. And then like your bench press variations and your fringe um, dip variations. So like your RTO dips, your accommodating resistance dips. Um, let me make sure I don't have a bench press variation up here by mistake. Where the hell did that guy go? I swear I had a feet up bench here. Where's he at? His feet are dangling up in there. Here you go. That's more or less how I would rank the S tiers in, in order, in my opinion. And you guys let me know how you feel about that. Or if you feel that there's an exercise that I missed that isn't an S tier that needs to be an S tier. Guys, I really enjoyed making this video for y'all. Make sure you comment down below. You let me know the next tier list that you would like me to make. Um, and then your song choice that you would like me to put on here as well. So... Just a few guidelines with that. I'm not putting any music on here that's going to get my shit copyright striked or copyright uh, claimed. So that's like, you know, American music, 
anime music, but royalty free tunes and then like video game music is fair game. So you guys let me know down below. Let me know if I missed anything. I'm going to put an addendum as the pinned comment where I rank a few exercises that you guys asked me about. I'll see y'all later. Peace.